Hello, welcome to Professor Penn's Pony Perusal Program, and I'm your host, Professor Penn. Today we will be discussing the first episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, entitled, Mare in the Moon. We must first begin our story with the tale of Celestia and Luna, the two princesses who created both night and day, with Celestia controlling the sun and Luna controlling the moon. However, ponies loved the sun, but often slept through the night. So for all of Luna's hard work, her efforts were mostly unappreciated. One fateful day, the younger unicorn refused to lower the moon to make way for the dawn. Culminating in her attempt to force them to enjoy her night by denying them the sun. This turned her into the infamous Nightmare Moon. Sadly showing every pony what happens when we let some pony fall into loneliness and sadness. Thus leaving Celestia with no other recourse than to use the elements of harmony to seal away her very own sister into the moon. The elder sister took on responsibility for both sun and moon, and harmony has been maintained in Equestria for generations since. As the episode proper begins, we are introduced to the first of our main cast, the Unicorn Twilight Sparkle, a very talented magic user and Princess Celestia's personal apprentice. And her assistant, Spike the Baby Dragon. We were both given a very important assignment by the princess herself. So I'm sending you to supervise the preparations for the summer sun celebration in this year's Okay, two important tasks. Make some friends! However, she is much more concerned with the prophesied return of Nightmare Moon. So our studious little unicorn has other ideas. I'll check on the preparations as fast as I can, then get to the library to find some proof of Nightmare Moon's return. This characterizes Twilight pretty well at the beginning of the series. As she does listen to the princess, she still isn't the type to just blindly follow it, and greatly prioritizes her studies above other things. Though the writers did have one small misstep on this point. Does that pony do anything except study? I think she's more interested in books than friends. This is some pretty blunt exposition. I know, show for little girls, but that really is no excuse to break the cardinal rule of show, don't tell. Now once in Ponyville, Spike convinces Twilight to at least try to make friends. Uh, hello? It doesn't go very well, but this scene does establish why Spike lets the matter drop. Instead, focusing on the supervising preparations part of their assignment. Number one, banquet preparations, Sweet Apple Acres. It's here we get our first real interaction between Twilight and the ponies of the town, as well as meeting the next of our main six. I'm Applejack. And her family. This here's Apple Fritter, Apple Bumpkin, Red Gallop. Red Delicious, Golden Delicious, Caramel Apple, Apple Scooter, Apple Tart, Baked Apples, Apple Brioche, Apple Cinnamon Crisp, Big Macintosh, Apple Bloom, and Granny Smith. I'm sensing a pattern here. And of course, two very important things about Applejack, her family and her farm, both of which are immediately set up in these early scenes. But if you recall, meeting an extended family wasn't part of Twilight's original plan. So we'll be on our way. Aren't you gonna stay for brunch? Sorry, but we have an awful lot to do. Twilight, I want you to take a look at this face. You are not winning this argument. Fine. Here we get some multi-purpose narrative. Not only are we introduced to our spunky speedster, Rainbow Dash, but also shown the Pegasi as stewards of the weather, which you might argue is not the best duty to assign to a filly whose character quirks include not thinking things through and being notoriously lazy. Unless, of course, it involves her personal goal. The Wonder And we also learn why they still trust her with the important task of controlling the weather. Flat. She's very good at what she does. This brings us to our next stop and our next pony. 
Rarity, our resident fashionista. Yeah, and in case the hearts didn't give it away, Spike has a thing for it. One of the great things about this episode, and the series in general, is that there are few to no wasted scenes. Even Rainbow Dash accidentally giving Twilight a, well, puffy mane, is needed in order to further illustrate Rarity's character and cause the two characters to interact more. Too green, too yellow, too poofy, not poofy enough, too frilly, too shiny. Now go on, my dear. You were telling me where you're from. Also, I can't be the only one that finds it a little odd there is such a thing as a pony corset. But after escaping that, they then go to check on the very last part of the celebratory preparations, the music. Led by our own shrinking violet, Fluttershy. I'm Twilight Sparkle. Yeah, it's pretty bad when Twilight's the one that has to try to be friendly. But isn't she just adorable? Get used to it. This is going to be your wubby for the rest of the series. Now, you might be asking yourself, in this situation, how exactly do they get much interaction between Twilight and Fluttershy? A baby dragon! Obviously. Now, while this does suit her character in many ways, in future episodes, you will learn that this is a bit of a logical error. But then again, you can't necessarily fault them for episodes that probably haven't been written yet. Curiosity then compels her to follow Twilight and Spike around as he tells her his entire life story. Yeah, I'm not even joking. He literally tells her his entire life story. And that's the story of my whole entire life. Well, up until today. Do you want to hear about today? Oh, yes, please. I am so sorry. How did we get here so fast? This is where I'm staying while in Ponyville, and my poor baby dragon needs his sleep. No, I don't. Yeah, if I had to deal with what Twilight did for what was probably several hours, I'd probably react the same way. However, we haven't quite finished with introductions yet. Meet Pink Mina Diane Pie, aka Pinkie Pie. Quiet. I mean, duh. Boring. You see, I saw you when you first got here. Remember? You were all hello, and I was all <gasps> remember. You see, I never saw you before, and I've never saw you before. That means you're new, because I know every pony, and I mean every pony in Ponyville. And if you're I bet you never guess that she lives right upstairs from a place that stores large amounts of sugar. So you see, that random encounter at the beginning did actually serve a purpose. Yeah, she talked and interacted with all of them, but I don't see how Pinkie Pie would know any of that. And perhaps more importantly, how exactly did Fluttershy even get in there? Of course, Twilight being the introvert bookworm, retires to her room. Here I thought I have time to learn more about the elements of harmony, but silly me, all this ridiculous friend making has kept me from it. Which I don't fully understand. I mean, it's not like anyone's stopping her from studying right now. In any case, it's time for the celebrations to begin. And to no one's surprise, Twilight was right. Thus enters the notorious Nightmare Moon. Oh, my beloved subjects. It's been so long since I've seen your precious little sun-loving faces. I absolutely love the way Luna is portrayed here. Particularly the insincerity she has when she addresses the ponies. She gives a very strong sense that she's only being polite and courteous because she can, and in her mind, they are not worthy of such things. She definitely carries herself the way one would imagine an evil overlord would. <laughs> Remember this day, little ponies, for it was your last. From this moment forth, the night will last forever. <laughs> and then with a very dramatic cliffhanger to keep everyone in suspense at the end of part one. And please join us for part two, The Elements of Harmony. For a thousand years I've waited here. Right.
Don't you see that there is vengeance in my 